from Malta. We are at the Tajian temples here in Malta. This megalithic temple complex predates the Giza pyramids. I'm gonna turn the camera around so that you can take a look at what I'm seeing and see the sight through my eyes as I'm seeing it. And so just take a look at this megalithic stone complex. Just being here calls to mind. Reminds me of when I was in Gobekli Tepe, just with all the circular enclosures. You have these different apses here. But the first thing we see as we walk along, well, you have this whole structure, very common for the Maltese, the ancient temples here in Malta to be built on a bench or a shelf of these giant stones. And you can see the part that was built on top. Over here, we have what appears to be, it almost looks like a water channel. Now this could be a later Roman, um, Roman work to the temple that, you know, was part of a later period. Don't know with certainty, as I do, I do believe they were here and they built water channels and so forth. But for the most part, what you're looking at is dating back over 5,000 years. The temple, again, predates the pyramids of Giza. And in fact, the settlements, the culture here, the archaeologists know, go even further back. Um, so let's take a look. I'm going to walk you around the temple and then I'll take you inside and just look there in the distance at this enormous megalithic lintel. That part in the front of it is reconstruction, but for the most part, what we're looking at here is <clears throat> still intact. This was all found, discovered here by farmers. What you're looking at is the South Temple, and this is a four app structure. You can see the two, you know, two apses here make up these semicircles. And most of the temple's external megalithic walls have survived to just above ground level while the inner wall was the first uh, Western apse here to have been replaced by modern construction. So absolutely amazing. Look close over here. You can see some of these divots in the ground. I was just showing these during a live video on my Facebook page. If you're not following me on Facebook, you can follow me. <clears throat> You can follow me there as well. I do post live videos on Facebook more frequently than I post live videos on YouTube, although I should probably be more active here on YouTube. I plan to be more active. I am going to be uploading more videos from my re... Unfortunately, I haven't been able to keep a consistent schedule because I've been traveling and documenting and capturing so much footage here in Malta, Sicily, Italy, and Greece. I've been on the road now for uh, about 20 days or so and i do plan to get each day you know i'm capturing footage at two to three to four different archaeological sites and so i'll edit down all that footage and get up online as soon as possible i'll be returning home to egypt in four days and i'll begin the editing process and i just have so much footage to share with you guys but i wanted to do this live to bring you guys along for the journey here at the Targian Temple. So if you're just joining us, again, I'm in Malta at the megalithic Targian Temple complex. Just look at the size of these megalithic stones, absolutely enormous. You can see a person over there, just the scale, just to give you an idea of the immense size that we have here. And then there's these two divots inside the stone. I can only speculate they may have been used to maybe prop up a like tree branches, sort of like you find inside the Great, uh, not the Great Pyramid, inside the Bent Pyramid of Dashor in Egypt. You have all these cedars of Lebanon wedged in between the stones. You can watch my documentary on the Bent Pyramid where I take you inside and provide an in-depth analysis here on this YouTube channel. I have a documentary on the Bent Pyramid that will show what I'm talking about, but just look at these enormous stones. I'm going to take you around the entire complex first and then I'll take you inside and we'll look at everything in detail. I mean, this is just amazing. The work of the ancestors here in Malta. Malta was originally part of Sicily. Uh, I believe it was around the Ice Age where it split, basically forming its own island, the island of Malta, which the people here have an interesting language which is influenced by our, uh, our 
it's our it's part arabic really and somewhat italian is like a combination because the arabs were here with the arab conquest in the ninth century a.d just like sicily <clears throat> and let me know what you see as you're watching the video if you see anything interesting go ahead and point out your observations by leaving a comment in the comment section down below or ask your questions and i'll try to answer your questions um, as soon as i have an opportunity to do so look at these massive stones Big stones, greater human people, perhaps the red-haired giants. So that's interesting. I agree with you. Uh, certainly not ancient aliens, but I lean toward the idea of ancient humans in a higher state of consciousness, a far more sophisticated civilization, although I'm not entirely convinced on this idea of giants. Um, we do find a lot of legends and lore about the uh, Cyclops and the Cyclopean ruins and, and giants. A lot of it you really have to take with a grain of salt. Some of it gets exaggerated by modern alternative authors and hi historians today who are trying to sell you books and tours. Uh, when you really look into a lot of the records, you'll see how the truth often gets stretched when it comes to giants. Not saying that large people didn't exist. I do believe, I mean, I'm six foot four. You could consider me a giant if I walked into a culture of smaller people. And I do believe that there were humans that were much larger than I was. I mean, there's evidence of that. But I don't think that these were necessarily built by giants. I think they were built by humans in a higher state of consciousness. <clears throat> this would be um, humans that embodied the ancient doctrine, the divine doctrine, which is the sacred science that R.A. Schwal de Lubitz writes about, that my mentor, the late great John Anthony West, wrote extensively about. Uh, and we also find it with the high wisdom of the ancient Egyptians. <clears throat> Bit of a sore throat. Uh, my immune system is down. I've been traveling for 20 days now, so I'm, I'm definitely, my immune system's a little lowered and I have a bit of a head cold, so I apologize if I'm choking on my words here. I'll do my best to continue narrating as we go around the site, and I'll also leave some space just for you to observe. <clears throat> so this is the central temple here you can see the large main apse has megalithic walls and paving and over here is really a true attest to the advanced culture that once existed here in malta the megalithic builders just look at the size of those stones so the mystery remains in terms of how why and exactly when you know we can't exactly pinpoint we know it goes back at least you know 300 4, 3400 3600 bc if not older there's many other ancient temples here that again predate the pyramids at least when I say predate the pyramids, I'm talking about the standard academic Egyptological point of view. I know many of you may believe that the pyramids are much older. Um, I actually believe that for a long time, but personally, after over 20 years of extensive research and really looking at all the sources and information and my travels, I've kind of come to the conclusion that although I never like to form a hard conclusion, but I lean more toward the idea that the Egyptologists are probably right, or at least close in the estimations of how the pyramids of Egypt were, although they could have very much likely been built on older foundations, and there is evidence to suggest that. So you have to realize the pyramid isn't just one product that was built over time. Um, but as far as the dating, I think they're in the right ballpark. And so it's interesting that these structures here are much older. If you look close, you can see some of the symbolism, the spiral pattern. We'll go down and take a look at that in a little bit. But it's interesting that you find raised reliefs and symbolism here at a time when Egypt didn't really, you know, wasn't really flexing with their raised reliefs yet. That didn't really start to happen until later periods in time. And just looking at all these apses and semicircular structures reminds me of the circular structures we find in ancient Turkey. You know, Anatolia with like Gobekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe, which I visited and made videos about and which we'll be returning to. Uh, Johanna James and I have put together a tour of ancient Turkey that will be taking place in October 2023. 
We have not yet announced it on the Adept Expedition site, but when I get back home to Egypt in a week, I'll be putting up the registration page. I've mentioned it a little bit on my Facebook page and I've already got an immense response. We, it looks like we already have a lot of serious people interested in going on this trip. So I assume like the Egypt tour, it's gonna sell out fast. And if you're interested in joining us for the Egypt trip, you can visit Adept Expeditions. We just opened up a new uh, Egypt tour for March. But let's get back to this site. Look at all of these amazing apses, these semicircular structures and the stonework over here. So <clears throat> this part is what is called the East Temple and it's comprised of four apses. They have the Torba floors, which sometimes that changes with some of the temples here in Malta, as you'll see in some of the other videos that I'll be posting. And let's walk around and I'll take you inside. More of these divots and the stones here. Now it's quite possible that there were additional rooms uh, that opened up in this area, but it's really hard to make out with the evidence that we have left. Um, this was partially reconstructed. You can see some of the reconstruction in the East Temple over here, but for the most part, this is the way that the temple, you know, was originally found when it was excavated. These holes, divots or cavities are a bit of a mystery. No one's entirely certain exactly what they were used for. There's a lot of mysteries here, which I'll point out as we go along the way. And then, you know, this big open space here, which was probably uh, getting a message here from Matt Simpson and Ancient Architects. Can't read it though, because the sun is glaring on the screen. It's hard to make out. Okay, if Matt, if you're watching, shout out to Matt and Ancient Architects. Anyway, you can see the circular structure right here, the remnants of, of the circular structure. This probably was some sort of ritual area. It almost looks like there's a broken stela there. And then we have the cavity in the floor. Let's walk around the site. Again, if you're just tuning in, NEXT, I'm here in Malta at the Tarjian Temple. I just left the amazing Hypogeum earlier this morning. Hypergeum is utterly fascinating considering that the temple, so-called temple, was was constructed underground from the earth as opposed to these temples which use stone of the earth to build up the temple. The Hypergeum is emulating what we see here but it's beneath the surface. And there's many mysteries and some legends that are attached to the Hypogeum, like the fact that 30 school children and a teacher went into the Hypogeum and disappeared and never came out. It's said that part of the Hypogeum began to deteriorate and they were locked inside. And so there's legends that those people, those people were never discovered. However, when we actually look from, you know, nothing on any, any newspaper sources, we don't have actual names or data for the school. And we have the same tale that's told at other sites here, at the catacombs and other sites in Malta. A lot, Malta is very much probably like a labyrinth underground. Much of it may be unexplored, but that tale gets told uh, at several other locations. So it's likely that it was just a legend told to keep small school children away from the site so that they wouldn't get lost. Then there's the idea that they found elongated skulls inside the hypergeum. This is untrue. They found skulls, they certainly found skulls, but to date, no one's seen any of the elongated skulls. This comes from one claim where, you know, one, someone basically said when one of the early explorers basically noted how they found the skull that was that of a long head. There's one deformed skull, it's longer than the others. But, you know, my research and everything I've looked into, I think it, this whole idea of the elongated skulls being inside the hypogeum, the truth is getting stretched. It's not like Peru where there are actual elongated skulls. Anyway, let's take a look. See over here, you have almost like this underground cavity. And there's legends here that are probably more accurate with like goats going underground in Malta and ending up like way on the other side of the island. Um, so there is probably like a labyrinth on the ground. And of course the knights were here. There's a long-standing esoteric tradition in Malta. Water, repairs and cracks and breaks in prehistoric megaliths. It's reversible, is reversible. Absorbs salt and moisture, does not damage limestone. It's like an ad. 
And this just talks about how the Tarjian temples were restored. Interestingly, you have this giant canopy above head, the material much like we see at Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. It is to preserve the elements for future generations. Over there, we're gonna be coming up upon what's called a cemetery. Interestingly enough, there's actually a cemetery right here on the side of the temple but don't wanna to focus too much on this or be disrespectful. We're here to focus on the ancient so-called temple. We can't say with certainty that this was a temple, but it's very likely that rituals and rites were performed here based on the evidence. We found different um, pottery shards and artifacts that would suggest various rites were performed in these temples. Um, but will thus, this area thus making it a ritual place or a temple. Again, circular stones with the slab in the middle. It's almost like a broken stele. It would have been a standing stone. Malta is known for being the oldest freestanding megalithic stone structures in the world, especially with Khadjaim, uh, which is a temple I visited yesterday. I'll be putting a video up on my YouTube channel and going a bit deeper into some of the esoteric aspects on that video. Let me know what you see in the comments below. Do consider giving it a like. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this one and a plethora of other styles of videos and documentaries that I put up on this channel covering ancient history, mysteries, civilizations. And look at this. I mean, it's just an amazing testament to the ancient people of Malta. And when you consider, when you put it in the, you know, the proper context and you consider that this was before the pyramid builders of Giza, it really puts things into perspective in terms of what else was happening around the world at that time. Here's an interesting observation. It looks like some sort of channel that was cut, maybe a water channel. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say with certainty. Maybe not. Just starting to change my mind on that one. It looks like, this almost looks like a fallen, this looks like this piece had fallen over. These might have all been standing stones, giant wreck standing stones like we see, like, like this example over here, like we see at the temple of Hajaim. Very common. This may be a later feature. This could even be Roman. I'm not sure. In the distance. You have more of these mysterious holes, cavities, the divots. Not actual holes that go all the way through. We are now about to enter the temple and you can get a more of a sense of the scale of these giant megalithic stones. I always like to look close at the stone to see if you can see the remnants of anything that may be symbolic or reliefs, although we don't find much of that here. Uh, then you have these holes. Let's get a close up. So these were connected, they go all the way through. So this was probably something to um, shield the stone, some sort of closure. And then you have, again, more of these divots, these circular divots, which may have been to insert logs or wood. Again, that's pure speculation. And then look over here, more megalithic stones. I mean, they're just enormous. Like I said, I'm six foot four, and as you can see, I'm looking up at this stone over here, which is clearly has to be over seven feet. It's quite possible each one of these stones, you know, there's a number of stones here. The number could be symbolic. Let's count. If we don't count the opening lintel, it's not lintel, but the, the vertical standing stone. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's seven, it could be one more. Seven is a symbolic number. And then again, you have one, two, three, 
you have these and, and there's a parallel on this side, right? There's a symmetry. So we know that something probably went across here, whether it was a beam of wood or something else to um, basically provide a door or closure, which would have closed off a sacred space, keeping it private from others. Over here, we have two of the four pieces of pottery that was discovered here. The, the others were in remnants, um, shattered fragments, rather. Uh, and you can see the opening where there would have been a handle. This, this piece of rope could have been used to pull that. It's amazing. Almost looks like stairs. close at the floor here this gives us a good idea you can see the crevice this gives us a good idea of the patterning it was all paved with these stones and then you have these enormous vertical stones and horizontal stones on top so i'm trying to look to see you have one two three holes if there's something that corresponds on this side here you have what appears to be a bull Right, and they show you show you depictions of it on the placard here, evidence on pottery of examples of the bull, and also so with piglets. Below is the well they discovered seal. They took the seal off. Now it's used as a modern uh, wishing well. Look close over here, you can see a little entrance and more artifacts. Such an amazing sight. So this is what I mean, like you really have to look close at the stone sometimes to make out the remnants of what once existed. The symbols in stone. My last, one of my last videos, I talked about the sympathetic magic in stone at Knossos in Greece. Here you have this uh, spiral pattern, which we find all over the Maltese. Uh, island temples, truly really remarkable. So what does it symbolize? If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. You know, is this spirit, is this like matter manifesting into spirit and then spirit returning to the material world? It's an esoteric perspective, or could this be a specific cycle, a season, and this be another one, or just waves of water, or veget perhaps some sort of leaf or vegetation, and it's posing. This could have been used for bathing. This could have been used if there was water in here. It could have been used as uh, to observe the sky from up above. You'd be able to observe the stars. We do know that there's you know astronomical alignments at a lot of these sites here in Tajan so this was an advanced culture of people who had a great depth of understanding for the cosmos the sky above as well as the earth here is the recurring motif of the uh, trilithon style you know you have the vertical lintel on top and the horizontal lintels that make up the entrance ways and this stone here would provide us with a clue. You can see that this stone was here. This would have been likely corbelled over. So this may have been a uh, corbelled rooftop. And we find more of these holes, divots. Again, if you're just tuning in, I'm here at the Tajian Temple in Malta. This again, pure speculation, but I would say that this was probably used to have some sort of like wooden beam, like the cedars of Lebanon were used inside the Bent Pyramid in, in Egypt at Dashur, but I can't say with certainty. 
you know, and then there's more of these holes in the stone, which would have been used to seal off the entrance. So now we know we're walking into a sacred space. I mean, the whole space is sacred, but this would have been probably reserved for some initiatic elite or the high priests or... Again, I'm just speculating. This is a mystery that we find at many of the temples here in Malta, these, these divots and pinholes, what, what they mean is really the mystery. What does it mean? Are they accounting for the deceased? Are they accounting for the people? Is it, does it mean something else? Let me know what you think, if you have any ideas on the symbolism. It's really all up for interpretation. Look at the reliefs. Look at the raised reliefs down here. Amazing, raised reliefs before the Great Pyramid of Egypt was even built. This semicircular apse, it looks like some sort of um, ritual area. This is the cemetery. The first phase of the Bronze Age is named after a cremation uh, cemetery that covered most of the central areas of the South Temple here at Tajin. It had deposits, they found ashes, which um, is different than the way it used to be where the, the remains would have been buried like a necropolis. Like at the hypergeum, you have skeletal remains that were found inside the hypergeum. But that whole system of burial changed over time to, you know, cremation. And then again, we have more raised reliefs. You can, you can see here some of what they found inside. Then this is absolutely astonishing, this giant sculpture. Giant sculpture of a um, statue of a Colossus, colossal figure that they found here at Tajin. You can see the feet and the bottom legs and knees and the skirt when it truncates at the top, which is not uncommon for the motif, the artifacts that they find here in Malta. And look, you see these, these, these patterns all along. It changes over here. And as I talked about in my Facebook video today, this is a tripartite symbolism where it, to me, it almost looks like vegetation, like some sort of tree, but you have, it's, it's like the master of animals or the triptych where you have, this is a longstanding esoteric theme. It's at the core of esoteric traditions where you have the central spine, right? And then you have in Freemasonry, you have the two different, um, or everywhere really, basically the idea that we are dual by nature and that um, opposites come together. If you take uh, opposites or, or opposition, like Set and Horus, you need opposition in order to create or manifest, rather manifest a creative principle. Right, so you have to balance everything to find that zero point in order to, con that's the idea of meditation ultimately, to connect with the divine source. You have to bring everything into balance. So you have two opposing opposites on each side. The, the Greeks had this, the ancient Egyptians had this idea. It's the, this idea of the divine doctrine of the sacred science which comes in useful today, practical application of this idea today. We talk a lot more about this in depth on my tours of Egypt um, and how we can put some of these things into practice to enhance our life in modern times, taking ancient wisdom for modern living. But look here, we have more of these spiraling patterns, these wave-like forms, which also remind me of the Minoan culture. I've seen this a little, very similar motif with the Minoans and even in Egypt. I'll be doing a video about this soon. Um, over here, again, these mysterious poles. What were they used for? What did they signify? What is their purpose? This represents one of the um, upright, two of the upright megaliths, which are now on display in the museum here at Tarjin. And interestingly enough, we found graffiti inscriptions on them that look like boats, which would then basically be illustrating um, boats in the temple at the Bronze Age, you know, some of the earliest representations of seafaring boats in the Mediterranean. 
more of the designs here. And then over here, if I zoom in, you'll see it looks like animals. You have these depictions of goats, pigs, and bulls. What took place here? What was happening in ancient times? Man, this thing is just amazing, you know? Just to imagine that this was here before the Colossus in Egypt. I mean, not quite as tall, but still really impressive sculpture. And why are they always truncated? They're missing heads. Many of them are missing, mi heads are not attached. It's almost like they could be interchangeable. Then you have this enormous megalithic lintel over here. This is part of the front here is a reconstruction. When they put the temple back together, the lintel, you can see where the modern restoration effort has taken place. And then down below, they leave this open because they have more of these holes in the ground here. These we find at a lot of the temples, almost all of the temples in Malta. Before the entrance, you always find these holes in the ground. What were they used for? What was that purpose? Were they merely symbolic? Were they functional? Were they symbolic and functional and if they were symbolic were they a form of sympathetic magic where you know the um they were energetically charged somehow or meant to have a some sort of desired effect you see all these round stones here they almost remind us of the round pounders that we find at the unfinished obelisk in aswan that, that the egyptologists claim or the way that they use to you know um fashion carve the the obelisks from the stone here the idea is that these were actually used as ball bearings roller stones to roll the megalithic stones um, at the temple of Khajaim inside the interpretive center they have and i'll put a video out showing they show how you know the megalithic stones are much easier to roll if you have a series of if you have a series of these stones so they might have been put in these massive blocks on top of the stones and pulling them that way and that's the way they move them and then you know probably just took a bunch of guys to use a rope to pull the megaliths up into place but how they slid these on top is still a mystery to me i i can only imagine that this was built from the top down that this was like ground level and that, that you know somehow i don't know it's still a mystery how why and for what purpose it's all still very much a mystery. There's a lot of theories out there that you could look into, but I don't think anyone has a conclusive answer. Anyway, let me just turn the camera around real quick to show you for scale the sheer size of this megalith. Look at this lintel. It starts over here and goes all the way over here. This is me standing underneath it. Again, I'm, I'm six foot four. I'm one of the giants myself. And still, you have these vertical stones, which are taller than me. Anyway, this is NEXT for Adept Expeditions. If you want to tour ancient sites around the world with me, you can visit adeptexpeditions.com. We still have space for the Egypt tour. We're going to have the Turkey tour coming up. Visit adeptexpeditions.com forward slash tours. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Leave a comment down below. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I will see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Oh yeah, if you want to help support the channel, you can always visit my Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash NEXT. I could really, really use your support. All right, peace out everybody.